All right, this video is going to talk about the types of infections, introduce some key vocabulary, and go through the phases of an infection. So when we're talking about an infection, which is where bacteria or another pathogen is actively replicating inside of a host, we can classify it based on where it's located and kind of if it stays there. So when an infection is localized to one part of the body and it remains there, we call it a local infection or localized. When the infection spreads throughout the body, once it enters the host, we call it a systemic infection. And occasionally, an infection will start off as local, and then if the opportunity arises, it will spread. So we actually refer to that as focal. And a lot of times, as you see in the picture, this happens when the original infection is kind of in the mouth area, because if somebody has a bad tooth, then the pathogen can use that as an in to the bloodstream, and then it can spread throughout the body, even though it normally wouldn't have. All right, so make sure you know these um, terms. Another couple terms that are commonly confused with one another is going to be a mixed infection and then primary and secondary infections. So I'm actually gonna start with a primary infection, which is the very first infection somebody gets. And a lot of times that's all you get. But occasionally, because the body is busy fighting off that primary infection, you're already kind of weak and more susceptible to a second infection, which we call a secondary infection. So these are sequential. That means you get the primary infection first, and then a while later, you'll get the secondary infection. All right, now with a mixed infection though, what this is, this is when you get infected by multiple organisms at the same time. Okay, so look at that picture on the left. So let's pretend that I am in a different country and they don't quite have the same water purification systems that we do here in the United States. And let's say I forget and I go and I get a big old glass of tap water and I drink it down. Well, if there was E. coli and Salmonella and Shigella all hanging out in that tap water, I just infected myself with three different pathogens all at the same time. This would lead to a mixed infection, okay? Because in that one glass of water that I drank, I got all three pathogens concurrently or simultaneously, okay? So again, with the primary and secondary infections, these are sequential infections. They happen one after another at two different points in time. A mixed infection occurs at the same time. All right, so these are some terms that you've heard before, but when we're describing infections, if it comes on quick and goes away quick, we call it an acute. I introduced this term back when we talked about viruses, but any infection that just kind of comes out of nowhere, but goes away pretty quickly, we say it's an acute infection. A chronic infection is one that's gonna be slow. It's gonna persist over a long amount of time, usually months or years. And then a latent infection is one where somebody will have signs and symptoms, then it goes away, and then it comes back, and then it clears up, and then it comes back. So this is going to be like um, herpes virus. So oral herpes, um, people will get, some people will get cold sores, but they don't have a cold sore all the time, right? Only when the virus is active do you have any symptoms, like a cold sore. But when the person does not have the virus actively replicating, there's no cold sore and they're fine. So that would be a latent infection, one that's recurring, uh, but it's not um, constantly active. All right, so our body lets us know when something isn't right, okay? And in our general conversations with, you know, people in the general public, we tend to use the term sub, uh, symptom even when maybe we shouldn't. So we actually want to characterize kind of the things we experience as either a sign or a symptom. So a sign is any objective piece of evidence that disease is occurring or that a disease is present. 
And then symptoms are more subjective. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the list of some examples. So look at some of these signs. Fever, that is something that can be measured, right? They can give you a thermometer, stick it under your tongue, and they can have physical evidence. Yep, you have 101 degree fever. Okay, um, same things with like skin eruptions. You can see the lesion, you can measure it. Okay, same thing with swollen lymph nodes. It's things that are more precise and more objective. It's not really a, oh, do you have a fever? If your thermometer reads a certain number, you have a fever. Like there's really no debating it. With symptoms, these are more subjective. So notice things like fatigue. Well, I may say I am really tired, but the doctor doesn't know how tired I am. What's normal tired for me? What I consider really tired, somebody else may consider feeling great. And so it's very subjective. Same thing with, you know, pain. What I consider a pain level eight, somebody else may consider a pain level two or vice versa. So it's very subjective. And with symptoms, the doctor kind of has to take your word for it, right? Because they can't measure fatigue. They can't measure um, on like a precise scale, you know, your pain or your achiness. All right, so the last thing for this video is just going to be the phases of an infection. So take a look at the, um, the axes here. Number of infectious agents, so that can be bacteria, viruses, whatever. So notice that the number is increasing as it gets higher. And then down here along the x-axis, that's going to be time. So initially notice there's no pathogen in the body. Once that number starts to go up, right, initially you've been like contaminated or maybe somebody coughed in your face. Once they start actively replicating, we now have an infection. But initially, right, we have no idea that we're infected. There are no signs, no symptoms. We feel just fine. This is called the incubation period. But once the pathogen has replicated enough that it hits a certain number, that's when you're going to start to feel off. And that's what the prodromal period is. Okay, these are very vague signs and symptoms. We typically describe the prodromal period as you feeling off. You're not sick enough to call into work, but it's like you woke up, maybe your throat's a little scratchy, your nose is a little stuffy. You don't feel normal, right? Something is off. You know that there's a really good chance that later that day or tomorrow, you're going to be sick, okay? So again, the number of pathogen is increasing here, but very vague signs and symptoms. Once we hit this logarithmic growth, okay, we're now in what's called the invasive phase. You are sick. You're miserable. You're, you know, you need to rest and stay home. This is the invasive phase. Okay, the most severe signs and symptoms, the number of pathogen is increasing very, very rapidly until it hits the you know, topmost um, point, okay? This topmost point where there's the most number of pathogen is called acme. And I remember that because I always think of like um, Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, right? And that little acme thing would hit the coyote. He gets this big old bump on his head. He was, you know, not feeling too good. So acme is the point at which there are the most number of pathogens in your body. Signs and symptoms are at their worst. But this is also the point where things now are going to start to get better. Okay, the immune system is kicking in and helping to clear things. So you're in the decline phase. Okay, your signs and symptoms are getting a little bit better, like you're still sick, you still don't feel too good, but you are slowly on the mend. Okay, and then eventually you get down into the convalescence period, and this is going to be where you have no signs and symptoms. You feel like you're good as new, but looky here. There are still pathogen, okay? So anytime there is pathogen actively replicating in your body, whether it's the incubation stage, the prodromal, invasive decline, convalescence, it does not matter. You are contagious. If you can spread the pathogen to somebody else, even if you feel fine, okay, then you're still contagious. All right. So remember, convalescence period, you feel good as new, no signs, no symptoms, but technically, there's some pathogen left. Once they're all gone, right, then you are back to normal.
All right, y'all, that is the end of this video. Let me know if you have any questions.